Hi, thanks for joining. Um, I am going to take you through an installation of Mirage today. I've uh, been asked for this content several times, um, especially at VMworld and Partner Exchange, um, where we have the hands on lab for Mirage, but we really talk more about using it and less about the installation. So I'm recording this video so that we can actually use it in the hands on labs. Um, and use it to eat up some of the time when, when the more disk intensive operations are, are taking place for several minutes and that way there's something um, for the users to do. If you're not familiar with the hands-on labs, I do encourage you to check them out. Um, you can just browse to hol.vmware.com and um, all the information is there to go create an account. It's a free resource that's available to customers and partners alike um, where we've pre-developed hundreds of hours worth of content on essentially every product that we offer um, and allow you to get hands-on with the product without having to worry about um, learning how to install it, learning how to configure it, or even having physical resources because everything runs in our one cloud environment. So you can just access it through a browser and be able to get uh, whatever time you need with all of the, with all of the different products. Um, most of them are very scripted but um, they're free form as well, so you can do anything you want in the environment. It's possible that you may mess something up that will prevent you from taking additional steps, but um, you can always just restart it and, and start completely over from the beginning. So anyway, um, you can see I'm actually in uh, the Horizon hands-on lab environment right now. I've uh, uninstalled all, the, all of the Mirage pieces, and uh, I'm actually going to go through the installation process right now. So the server that I'm on is actually the single server inside of this lab that I'm going to use for all of the Mirage components. Um, there are a couple of different components. Normally, in a production environment, you would separate some of them out. There is a management server, which is responsible for all of the controlling um, and the settings and the configuration of the environment. And then there's what's called Mirage servers, which are the ones that do the heavy lifting. They're the ones that actually take care of all the disk operations. Um, and then there's a couple of management components that I'll talk about as we start to install those. But um, we're going to put everything on one server for the purposes of this lab because obviously in this hands-on lab environment, um, resources are at a premium. We try to keep everything um, as small and light as possible so that we can accomplish the, the goal, the objective, to allow you to play with the products without having to eat up just tons and tons of resources. So we're going to be pretty light in this environment. Um, I definitely encourage you to take a look at the installation guide for Mirage. Um, it's not a very big, uh, a very big document. As you'll see, the installation is very, very simple. Um, but the probably the most important part is to walk through the prerequisites at the very beginning. Make sure you've got the right versions of IIS, all of the right software and hardware requirements. Whether you're installing this on virtual servers or physical servers, just make sure you've got all the right pieces in place um, so that you don't run into any surprises later on. So I have um, the Horizon, uh, I'm sorry, the Horizon Mirage installation bits mounted here on the CD drive and I'm just going to take you through a typical installation process. So the very first thing that we always install when we get started with Mirage is the management server. Um, once we have that in place then we really can start to add the components that are going to be necessary for our specific requirements. So I'm going to go down here and I am just going to double click this um, Mirage Management Server Installer. And as you'll see, walking through the wizard is pretty straightforward. Um, it's actually a very quick install. I'm going to remove this SQL Express reference because I actually have SQL installed on this server. So I'm going to use SQL um, and I am going to put this on my drive which has just a little bit more space as well and the D drive is actually my CD so I'm going to put this on my E drive. Um, now when you're asked to choose how you want to run the services you've got uh, basically two options. You can use local system. Local system is sufficient for running the services if you are running this on a single server and your storage is local. So that storage repository and the cache, which we're going to configure later, if they are local to your servers, to your management server in this case, and to your Mirage server later on, then local system is sufficient. If not, if we're using any shared storage, then you would want to use a, a service account 
which has permission to your sys share where you're going to be storing that those files the repository for mirage so i am using local storage because this is a standalone uh, but i'm going to go ahead and put the administrator account in anyway Just going to start the install. And uh, I was going to go in and cut some of this out to shorten it up, but the install is really very fast. So I think I'm just going to let you kind of run through this. It'll just take, uh, you know, 30, 45 seconds maybe, but um, really kind of give you an unedited uh, experience for how simple it is to really get this solution up and running. Um, and then again, as, as we get through some of the other components later on, we'll talk about what's optional and, and what you might want to include and for what purpose they all do. So again, this is the management server, which is installing right now. Um, normally you would put this on some server, maybe shared with one of your Mirage servers, or maybe just a real lightweight server um, for the purposes of being your central repository. Uh, sorry, your central point of management. Okay, so we finished that wizard. Um, the next piece is now that we've got the management server, we need something to actually connect to the management server so we can actually do the management. So normally this console would go on your administrator's workstations. Um, again, for the purposes of the lab, I'm just going to put everything here. So everything's going to get installed on this one system. So I am going to walk through this wizard as well. And... Um, and get our Mirage console installed and obviously you can see that goes pretty quickly now what I want to do is I'm actually going to connect to that management server so let me take you through this process here real quick the uh, management console as you can see is just an MMC snap-in um, we'll talk a little bit later about the web management console uh, but as of right now the current version is uh, Mirage 4.3 is what we're installing here um, the the MMC snap-in console is still the primary system. This is still the primary management piece. So we're just going to click Add System. You can either right-click or click over here to the right like I did. And because I'm installed on the same system, I'm just going to go with localhost. And of course, I'm going to get prompted for my serial. So let me enter these real quick and hope I remember to go back and block these out before I uh, ship this off to YouTube so I don't get in trouble. All right. And you can see I'm licensed for uh, 500 CVDs which is going to expire here pretty soon. Just using an eval license. So now I am connected. You'll see I'm getting this message here that says server down. The server's not really down. I haven't installed a server. So what that's talking about is my Mirage server, the actual system that will do the work. Um, I haven't installed one yet, so um, you know that, that's, that's why I'm seeing that message. So we're actually just going to minimize this console, and we're going to continue with the install process. So I'm going to browse back over here to my install CD. And now is the big piece. Now is the Mirage server. This is the next piece we want to install. So I'm going to double click on this wizard. Get this one fired up as well. Again, just kind of walking through a wizard. Pretty straightforward. Same thing with SQL. I'm going to blank that out because I want to use the default SQL server instance. And I'm going to create a new local cache. Um, and I'm going to leave my cache also on... D drive. So let me, or not D, my E drive. And this is 100 gig. I don't actually even have that much. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this down quite a bit. And let's just leave it at, let's leave it at 1 gig for now. Again, the recommendeds are all included in that documentation as well. Now I get to the configuration of security. Um, 
by default, Mirage will use 8000 and 8001 for communications. And then you've got the ability to configure your certificates. Um, I do not have certificates installed on, in this lab, so I'm going to actually choose no security. Um, but normally in a production environment, you would have certificates ready for this. Um, and you would choose SSL and configure your certificates so that you can secure the communications between the components here. Yes, I know it's insecure and I would never ever do it in production. Again, same deal on the, on the accounts. You can either choose to use local system or you can use the administrator if you have a need to. If you're going to use any kind of shared storage, you'll need a service account that has permissions to it. Now this wizard um, or actual installation process runs just a little bit longer than the management server but it's still pretty quick. Um, you'll see we're just kind of running through things. This is um, you know running live. I'm just kind of talking over it actually. That one ended up finishing faster. So now we've got the server done and I'm going to click restart here and I'm going to edit this part out um, while the server comes back up just to make this video a little bit little bit shorter for you guys. Okay, we're back. Uh, my server's back up and running. And uh, at this point, we have finished installing the two critical components, which is the management server and the Mirage server itself. At this point, you actually have a, uh, a functioning system. So you could go and start to manage, start to create your layers and, and start to manage your desktop images now using this Mirage installation. I'm going to take you through a couple other components. Um, there are a few optional pieces that you could choose to install. Um, so if I go back into this same server folder, you'll notice that I also have something in here called Web Access. Now what that actually is is the file portal. You may know that Mirage has a file portal which is essentially a self-service component that users can use to go back and retrieve either previous versions or files that are no longer on their desktop that they want to recover. Um, they essentially have a self-recovery capability from any files that were captured in previous synchronizations or snapshots of their particular desktop. Um, so it's a handy feature. I'm not actually going to put this on, uh, but again, the wizard is pretty straightforward. Um, it's next, 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 you're done, and then all you have to do is you go into the configuration and you set the URL that you want to use um, to, to allow your users to actually access that component. Um, again, all installed or all explained clearly in the installation guide. A um, couple other um, optional steps. Um, if you are going to use Mirage for any Windows 7 migrations, uh, if that's part of your use case, um, it's already, as of today, as of this recording, it's late January of 2014. So if you're still running XP or Vista, well, I guess Vista, you've got more time, but who runs Vista anyway, right? If you're still running XP um, and haven't migrated to Windows 7, then this may definitely be a tool that uh, and a use case that you need. Um, but I'm not going to go ahead and do the, the USMT because I actually don't have access to the USMT folders right now from the Windows AIK. So I'm going to skip that step. What I am going to do um, is I'm going to install the web management and then I'm going to take you through the configuration to actually set up the domain joins so that when I provision desktops using my base layers, I can actually have it automatically join my domain. Um, but what I do want to do is I want to install the web management piece. So I talked about this MMC snap-in. There is a web management piece. Um, it was newly released in 4.2, got some new capabilities in 4.3. Obviously, like all VMware tools, web management is the way we're proceeding with all of our, uh, all of our products. So uh, Mirage is going to continue to gain capabilities in the web management console until it is able to completely replace the MMC snap-in. Uh, but as I said earlier, as for of right now, the MMC snap-in is the primary method. So. In order to get to that piece, I'm actually going to back up and I'm going to go down here to web management. And this web management is what's going to actually install that console for me. And then you'll be able to learn more about this if you take the Mirage hands-on lab. But as far as the installation process, it's going to look pretty much like everything else we've already done in this recording. Um, just a real quick wizard. Yes, my management server is on localhost. 
uh, because I could have my web management remote if I wanted to. Um, and you can see that wizard shoots by pretty quick. Um, there's not a whole lot going on. Uh, I didn't mention earlier, I don't think, but it does require IIS 7 already be installed and configured. So if you haven't done that, you will need to do that before actually installing this piece. And at this point, we are done with the installation. There's really just one last step to get this system up and running, and that is to launch my management console here. And then what I want to do is I want to open this up. I'm going to have to add this system again because after the install um, of the management server, it did not keep that. So I'm going to put that back in. Now you can see I actually get a connecting, um, so my system is up and running. If I go down here to system configuration, I do have some options under here. I'm not going to expand on all this right now because you can learn about all this in the hands-on lab, but I do want to go in here to settings, and I just want to show you this is kind of a, a, a critical piece of the installation. Down here under general settings is where you'll actually set the account that you're going to configure to, to join your domain. So again, um, you would have a service account in most cases that had very specific rights to do um, exactly what you needed to do and nothing more. Uh, I am, of course, giving it full rights to the whole world because that's how most of these hands-on labs are configured. But I am just going to set that up. And at that point, my Mirage, at this point, my Mirage environment is completely up and running. So Hope that helped out for all of you who have been looking for some more guidance on what the install really looks like. Um, like I said, it is pretty straightforward. Um, it's a complicated tool, but the install process is very, very simple uh, to set up. It's, it's very powerful in its capabilities, but installing is uh, definitely a quick operation. Thank you very much, and uh, if you are taking this while you are waiting for something to complete in the hands-on lab, Hopefully it's done by now and you can return to your lab. Thanks and have a great day.